Welcome. Hi, I'm Chris Leatham, and this is The Economy and You. Um, this week, we're going to be talking about all things Google. We've got Daniel Hildebrandt from the, the GermanGoogleGuy.com. Welcome to the show. Thank you very much. Thanks, Thanks for, for coming. Me. Thanks for appearing on Think Tech. Um, I wanted just to say a little bit to our veterans out there. Today's Veterans Day, and in honor of our veterans, I'd like to wish everybody uh, uh, thank you and say a big thank you to, uh, for your service and your hard work and your sacrifice. I'm a former Marine, so I can appreciate all the uh, sacrifices that veterans out there have made. So I just want to acknowledge uh, our servicemen and women. So anyway, thank you for being on the show. Um, so I wanted to sort of start off and, and let you talk a little bit about how you got into this sort of whole weird and wonderful world of <laughs> Google. Uh, well, that started um, in 1999, um, like w with, the, with the start of the internet, so to say. Um, um, I was always fascinated, and um, my dad had a company, you know, we did online marketing back then, and we still do it. Um, my dad has a company in Germany, I have a company here, uh -huh. and um, that's all I know, online marketing, yeah. That's what you do? That's what I do, yeah. Okay, all right, so online marketing. Um, now, Google has been going through some interesting transformations of late. In fact, on the stock exchange now, they are referred to as Alphabet. Right. right? They That's changed right. their name. Exactly. Okay. Now, Google is still a part of Alphabet. Yes. Okay. But uh, Alphabet has sort of become the sort of holding company for Google, YouTube, and various other entities that fall under that whole enterprise. That's now. right. Is that right? Okay. So now, um, Google bought YouTube a few years ago. Right. And now that's become one of the major websites on the internet today yes. for watching videos. It's a great platform for advertising, uh, for marketing, explaining ideas, concepts, uh, and entertainment. Absolutely. People use it as a movie theater, you know, yeah, right, yeah, you know yeah. right on their computer. Um, so um, now there are millions of web pages being created every day. There's thousands, hundreds of thousands of websites being made every month. Okay. So it's become this just massive yeah. uh, thing, the internet. Now, if I'm a guy and I'm starting a new company, I'm, I'm an entrepreneur, I want to start a new business, maybe it's brick and mortar, maybe it's online, mm -hmm. okay? But, uh, wow, you know, here we are, right? Right. So, um, where do we get started today? Do we still need to have a website? Is a website still relevant? with all the sort of social media marketing tools that are out there, LinkedIn, Facebook, uh, Pinterest, all these sort of weird and wonderful platforms out there in social yeah. media. Is it still relevant to have a website? Do we still need to have a website? Uh, that's a very good question. Um, so today, <clears throat> um, we work a lot with landing pages as well. Okay. So, um, a website is defined, you know, uh, a website has several pages and, um, you know, whenever you look at a website, you have usually an about page, a contact page, um, you know, maybe a blog on the side and all mm -hmm. this kind of stuff. Um, a landing page is different. A landing page is just one single page that has all the relevant information and um, you are trying to for example, get an email address or uh, um, get the get the visitor of the landing page to give you a call mm -hmm. or something like that. Right. So it's it's very different. A website can easily cost, depending on how you know, like how big it, it is, it can easily cost a couple thousand dollars. And also, sort of the intent of the website. Exactly. So if it's just a business card, like if it's an oversized business card, right. Very simple, very cheap, right. Easy to put up. Right. On the other hand, if you're building out a website that's sort of all-encompassing, um, that's going to be found on the search engine, on the internet, you want it to rank with the search engine, exactly. all that sort of thing, the price goes up. Absolutely. Just that's a little. Just absolutely. a little. <laughs> <laughs> well, yeah, that, yeah. No, you're absolutely right. That, right. That's a different, a totally different story. If, um, if you are really, you know, you, you're a small business and you're, mm -hmm. you say, okay, um, I don't need this big catalog of products or this big product catalog on my site. I don't need um, 1,000 or 500 pages of content on my site. Mm -hmm. Maybe I'm only selling one product. Exactly. I'm selling an electric 
scooter. Exactly. Or so, skateboard. Exactly. My so, first show, by the way, was electric skateboard. Oh, okay. Yeah. <laughs> <laughs> so, yeah, so then, uh, you know, a landing page might be, uh, uh, might be just enough for you. And a landing page usually costs um, maybe a couple hundred dollars. If, you know, like if an agency does it, uh, um, we even does it, we even do it like for $65 a month because we update it and all, and we optimize it. So, okay. um, this is different from a, from a website where you have hundreds, sometimes hundreds of pages behind it, you right. know? So um, this is one of the first questions a, a business owner or entrepreneur should ask, them the, ask themselves. Do I need a website or is a landing page enough? Will that suffice? Yeah, yeah, yeah. So, okay, but if I'm going to have a landing page, mm -hmm. okay, that means I'm going to employ a different marketing strategy. Is that about right? Yeah, yeah. Because a website, Maybe I'm looking to build a website, so I want it to show up organically right. in search results. But if I'm building a landing page, then I'm going to be leveraging other functionality through the internet, such as lead page, lead page marketing or lead boxes. Right. I'm going to be using maybe more social media, yes. uh, Instagram, Pinterest, um, sites where I, you know, there are, I'm using imagery, I'm using uh, <coughs> blogs. Um, Facebook, yeah, I'm using yeah, yeah. strategies out of there, LinkedIn. Right, right. Okay. So abs that's absolutely correct. So, for example, one of my clients, um, <coughs> he owns the, uh, the website Hawaiian.com. So Hawaiian.com, we, um, we are looking for um, a long, we, we are having a long tail strategy, which means um, we want Google to index our page. We want to rank high in the search engine. Organically. Uh, organically, right. exactly. Okay. So that's why we have a lot of content. We have enriched content on the page, which means we have videos, we have pictures, we have uh, blog posts, we have um, you know links from Facebook uh -huh. coming in. I bet you have pretty girls on that site. Absolutely. <laughs> <laughs> Okay. Yeah, it's run yes. by two guys. I mean, yes, of course, let's get a pretty girl. So that, that people are going to stay there on the site longer. Yeah. Exactly. Yeah. So, um, so yeah. So there we there with the Hawaiian.com page, we are going for the long tail, you know. And then, I just today finished a, a finished a, a landing page for a client who does um, uh, um, who is a consultant for uh, tech step. So or for tax debt. So if people tax debt, exa tax, exa debt. tax debt, tax debt, you owe right. money for you didn't pay your taxes. Exactly. So okay. you right. you you know okay. you owe ten thousand right. dollars in taxes. Uh -huh. Give me a call. So the, okay. and that's it. That's the whole message. Okay. So and there we are going for a short tail, which means we buy traffic just like you said. We buy it from Facebook or from Google mm -hmm. or um, there's other. Uh, uh, um, networks out there where, can, where you can actually go and say, okay, I want to buy traffic and send them to my landing page and then have people, you know, like convert, which means they either type in uh, uh, their email or they give you a call. Okay. Now, that's great. Now, I build up, um, what this idea is that you're building up an email marketing list. Right. Okay, so that you can reach out to people who maybe have an interest in your product or yes. service. Yes, yes. And um, then it, then you use that to start to develop a relationship with the client. Absolutely. You're not just looking necessarily for the quick sale. Exactly, yes. Okay, okay. So uh, when we talk about um, a landing page, are you also building lead pages? Uh, and one of the things I wanted to touch on was something called split testing or mm -hmm. A-B a, B testing. A-B testing. Okay. Yeah. So maybe you can ex explain why that's relevant or why that's important. Yeah. Uh, yeah, so A-B testing is actually one of the very important things when it comes to uh, landing pages. Um, because if you have just one page, you want to have a very high either a click-through rate or a conversion rate so that people type in their email address or, uh, mm -hmm. or you know, give you a call. And um, conversion rates with good landing pages are about like 30%. So 30% wow. of the people that actually go to the page mm -hmm. give you a call or leave their email address. Okay. And with A-B split tests, um, what you do is you have the exact same page, but you change one little thing. For example, a different headline okay. or um, a, different, uh, a different product on the page. Okay. Or sometimes it's just the color of a button just to see, okay, does it actually uh, have any influence on the conversion rate? So if I put a great big button, 
that's about half the width of the screen and said, click here. Click here, buy Will now. it get me a better conversion rate? That's what I want to know, right? Exactly. So we're just going to change that one little thing. Exactly. Right? Make it an orange button. Okay, make it a great big orange button exactly. instead of a great big green button. Yeah. Okay. So, and by doing sort of A-B testing, now, is this something that's ongoing? Uh, to a certain uh, to a certain extent, yes. yes. Um, you know, if if you have a very high conversion rate or click through rate, whatever <coughs> the the purpose of mm -hmm. the site is, at some point, um, you know, when when you're at the like thirty thirty five percent, you're you're, you're, you're you, pretty. Good. You have diminishing rates of return. In other words, if you keep working right. on it beyond that, you're not necessarily getting a, a, exactly uh, exactly you know big bang for your buck. Exactly. Right? Okay. So now, once you're doing that, and you've got a site set up for that, okay, um, but things keep changing on the internet, and I want to come back and I want to talk about Google's search engine algorithms mm -hmm. and their filters, mm -hmm. because the filters and the search engine search engine algorithms aren't static; they keep changing. Absolutely, is that right? Okay. That's right. All right. So we're going to take a short commercial. We'll be back in a minute. I'm Chris Leatham, this is The Economy and You, and we're talking to Daniel, the German Google guy, from germangoogleguy.com. Absolutely. And we'll be right back. Aloha. Hi, I'm Jay Fidel. I'm host of uh, Hawaii, the State of Clean Energy, which is our flagship show, which plays 4 to 5 p.m. every Wednesday. And the, uh, the supporters of that show are uh, Hawaii Energy Policy Forum and uh, Hawaii Energy. And luckily enough, we have representatives of both of them right here today to tell you more about what they think about the show. Uh, Sharon Moriwaki at my left is uh, co-chair of Hawaii Energy Policy Forum, and she goes first. Sharon? Thank you. Thank you, Jay. I'm so glad that we have this Hawaii, the state of clean energy. This was uh, two years ago when we started this, and we have continued it because it's so important, and there's so many developments happening across the state. And we hope you'll tune in every Wednesday, 4 to 5. It's wonderful. And uh, Ray is uh, Hawaii Energy. Ray, what is your thought about the same subject? Well, I, I agree completely with Sharon uh, that uh, we are talking about every Wednesday, 4 to 5, uh, we talk about some of the most important subjects that uh, are affecting the islands uh, now and into the future. Uh, energy, clean energy, we need it. Uh, we often run into uh, new ideas that we had not uh, thought about before. Uh, we did just today, mm -hmm. and uh, I, I think we're going to have more of that uh, in the future. So uh, come on down and, uh, and watch us uh, 4 to 5 on Wednesdays, um, and we'll uh, see what happens. We'll see you then. Aloha. Aloha. And we're back. I'm Chris Leatham. This is The Economy and You. I know the name of the show probably doesn't... Uh, excite people so much, but it just sort of allows me to talk about interesting things here in Hawaii. Uh, but I wanted to kind of, and uh, our guest today is Daniel Hildebrandt from uh, the GermanGoogleGuy.com. And so we were talking, I wanted to sort of talk about search engine optimization mm -hmm. um, and some of the things that have happened in the last year or two uh, with search engine optimization, mm -hmm. because it's, um, Google has said one of the most important things now is mobile. Absolutely. Mobile devices, uh, Google uh, recognizes that mobile or Alphabet recognizes that um, a lot of the time we're searching through mobile devices today. So one of the key criteria to your site ranking well is having a responsive website. That's right. Wow. Man, talk about creating work for, for web designers. <laughs> what an opportunity. So the idea, the idea behind a responsive website is that your site now has to sort of comport uh, to the viewport mm -hmm. uh, or the device that you're looking at the website on and be responsive to that type of a device. Absolutely. Okay. So what kind of, what kind of challenges have you, have you noticed with your clients? Um, especially <coughs> bigger clients that have um, like a lot of content on the side and uh -huh. that put, you know, ten thousands of dollars into their websites, you know, maybe, maybe a few years ago. But still, they put a lot of money in there, mm -hmm. and you know, it's back then it was, you know, uh, it was people had like mobile sites. You know, it was it was a different site. Exactly, it was yeah. a different site, and um, 
Now Google says, well, you know what, we don't want this mobile site anymore. They still, you know, if you, if you redirect your user to it, it's still okay. But Google says, we want the website to be responsive. So, which means it doesn't matter on what device you're actually looking at the site. Mm -hmm, mm -hmm. It has to adjust to the screen. Right. And um, now, there's been some changes in the HTML world mm -hmm. to make this possible. Mm -hmm. HTML5 has come about. Yes. And within the HTML5 uh, protocol or standard, uh, they've given us some new HTML tags and tools to accomplish this. Mm -hmm. Is that about right? That's about right, yes. Yeah. And so now you've got a lot of um, sort of things. The first thing that happens before a page is rendered right. is that it tries to figure out what kind of a device it is. Exactly. And then renders accordingly. But this has affected a lot of websites because a lot of websites, basically, if you didn't, if you didn't conform, right. you lost... Rank. Uh, you lost ranking. Yeah. So maybe you got knocked. You were on the first page, and now you've got knocked off of there. Worst case, yeah. yeah. Worst case scenario, yeah, yeah, that could happen. So that means that you're going to have to spend. You have to continue to invest. So uh, now there's other kinds of issues. Google has implemented different kinds of um, filters as well. One is the panda filter, which we've heard about. Mm -hmm. Uh, the farm filter, the pigeon filter, the there's so many yeah, there's right a variety now, yeah. of filters, yeah. Hummingbird, yeah. And the hummingbird, yeah, right? Yeah, the hummingbird. Now, what is the hummingbird filter? Um, well, so <clears throat> um, all these algorithms, all these Google algorithms, um, have one goal: to deliver the best user experience or to deliver the best results mm -hmm. whenever you type in a search term. So Google doesn't care that I'm spending money on pay-per-click ads. Uh, they're interested organically. They want to give the best results. Uh, both uh, AdWords, um, AdWords, which is the advertising tool, uh, uh, Google's advertising tool. So right. uh, it works kind of similar. It, uh, even there, Google says, "Hey, we want to deliver um, the results with the highest relevance." Well. Now we can say, hey, Google, that's awesome. Thank you so much. Uh -huh. You're great guys, you know. But then on the other hand side, you got to look at it from this way, from this perspective. Um, the more people click on the advertisements, the more money Google makes. So, of course, they want to deliver the advertisements with the highest relevance to you so mm -hmm. that you click on it so right. that Google makes money. Right. You know? So, yeah, but we have uh, a Google is always about relevancy, and that's why content is so important. Okay, but when we talk about um, all these filters, what these filters are doing is, I know one filter, basically it looks at uh, your domain name, right? And if you make a domain name equal to a search term, but then you got junk content on the web page, your website can get right, flushed. Right, right. Well, Google has more than 200 factors. Google says, says they have more than 200 factors that mm -hmm. influence a website's ranking on the search result page. 200 different. More than 200. So what you just said is one of them. So, you know, it comes to authority, you know, like how many links do I get from authority websites, right, for right. example, you know. And there's a, there's a filter for that as well where exactly. people have paid for links from right. link farms. Exactly, yeah. And they, they don't like that. Google doesn't like that. Right, right, right. Okay. So, yeah, there's, so the whole search engine optimization topic, um, what we what we talked about uh, is you know when somebody gives you a call and he's like hey I, I optimize your website for ninety nine dollars a month I've gotten those calls <laughs> I have gotten those calls somebody from India says I would like to have the opportunity to optimize your website and yeah. they they identified my website and they've told me all these things that are wrong with it and how they're going to fix it right but then I'm I'm a little bit savvy because I actually know how to design websites right, and right, I know right. a little bit about search engine optimization. And the things that they're talking about are very old school. Right. And, and really, to me, not that relevant. Right. So, the, the, like, there's... So, should we be a little suspicious of guys? Uh, you know, I don't... Uh, I, I work with guys from India. They, you know, they're doing a good job when it comes to online, uh, um, you know, like, optimization uh, uh, things, as long as you guide them. Um, uh -huh. I wouldn't... You know, I wouldn't necessarily, necessarily pay just drop ninety nine dollars every month yeah, and let yeah. it be, let them go. Exactly. Now you gotta you gotta guide them. You gotta you gotta be on top of your game. You gotta know what you're talking about, mm -hmm. um, because um, ninety nine dollars a month. We talked about two hundred factors that you have to know to get a better ranking on Google. Right. I don't think that you can do that for ninety nine dollars a month. Really? Nah. So maybe maybe it's not the best. Maybe it's 
you try it and see how it goes? Or? Yeah, I, I wouldn't recommend it, you know, no. but um, okay. if you, this is the, this so, is the thing, if you want to save money. So what's the right approach? If somebody says, look, I need to have my, op my mm. website uh, optimized, what approach would you take with them? Like, how do, what's the right way to have a consultation with somebody about helping their site rank well? Mm. What's the right way to do that? Okay, so um, wh what we do, for example, is mm -hmm. um, we have a 90-minute consultation. 90-minute consultation means we either sit down with the client or we do it online, uh, uh, you know, and look at this site. And um, we look at his site and we uh, have an inter interview. Okay, so what are you doing so far and what are the, what are the mm -hmm. results? And maybe you need to understand something about their business model. Absolutely, yeah. absolutely. If, you know, and you want to know... Uh, we want to know, okay, so what are your, who's your biggest competitor? Mm -hmm. And then, you know, we can look at his ranking online, and then we compare it with our client's ranking online, and then we can kind of see, okay, so where, where are we at right now? And what do we have to do? What are we doing right? What are we doing wrong? And um, a lot of uh, work, for example, uh, SEO work, search engine optimization work, is sometimes just... Um, you know, getting things right that were done wrong in the past, and that takes up a lot of time. For example, you mentioned link farms. Incoming links from um, websites that are not relevant, that don't have mm -hmm. uh, relevant content, you know, right, for example. Right. Or they're on Google's naughty list. Exactly. That yeah, will actually the disavowed hurt. disavowed list. Exactly. Right? It, it will hurt your website. And then mm -hmm. you have to try to, you know, uh, to get those links the, those incoming links, you have to cut them off. And how do you do that? Usually you have to send the people emails. You have to sometimes call them and be mm -hmm. like, hey, I don't want my website or your website to link to my website. And that's, you know. That's a lot of work. It's a lot of work, yeah. Wow. Ah, that's a, that's, that's a, that's a problem. Th th that's one of the parts, you know, yeah. that's one of the uh, uh, things why search engine, professional search engine optimization is not cheap. And the clicks, when I, I hear a lot from uh, um, business owners, uh -huh. they say, oh, yeah, uh, I do SEO, and then the clicks are free. Well, mm. yes, the clicks are technically free, but right. you have to invest, you know. In the and search engine, in, in, so. into having your site rank organically. Exactly. So you either pay the piper this way or you pay the piper that way. Exactly. But you're going to pay to dance. <laughs> either way, you're going to pay to dance. <laughs> right. That's about right. <laughs> okay. Well, um, so... Uh, now, somebody wants to employ a long tail strategy. Mm -hmm. Okay, they're building. They want to build a site long term. Mm -hmm. Okay, what's some of the things that you look at in developing a long term, a long tail strategy for someone? Mm -hmm. um, one of the important things is, uh, of course, we start with um, website or landing page, mm -hmm. and um, then we go over the goals. Uh, what are the goals of your site? And there's a lot of business owners out there when we talk to them, I'm like, okay, so uh, who's your target audience? What is your goal? And, uh, you know, mm -hmm. I talk to local business owners and they said, oh, yeah, my target, target audience is everybody out there. And I looked at the website. I'm like, okay, so is your website in Chinese? No. Is your website in Japanese? No. I'm like, so obviously not everybody out there is your target audience. Right. So this is really one of the things that you have to think about before you start investing any money in online advertising, mm -hmm. you know, who do you want to have on your site? Who do you want to sell and to? I guess it's also about the experience that they're, they're going to have on the site. Absolutely. And, and if, yeah. if, is the goal to get an immediate sale or is the goal to build up a long-term relationship Absolutely. with the client where yeah. you may have a subscription-based ongoing uh, revenue stream? Right, right. Okay, so all these are different factors in how you would build out the site. Is that about right? Uh, yeah, yeah. For example, one of my clients, um, uh, Cameron Brooks, he's an aerial photographer. And um, his goal is to get attention to his website, people's attention, and that they come to the site and buy or purchase uh, um, his aerial photography. And he has great shots. And what mm -hmm. we did for him was his website is just, is just pictures because that's all he does pictures. Mm. So there's, you know, a little about page, but that's about it because he is not the main focus. If you are looking for aerial, fo aerial photography in Hawaii, mm -hmm. what do you want to see? You want to see pictures of Hawaii. Aerial photography. Exactly. Yes. <laughs> and not the guy who does it, you know, right. with a camera. Right. It's nice to know who, who, who is the artist, but that's not the focus. So uh -huh. focus, always focus on what 
do you, what does the user expect? What do they want to look at? What do they want to see? Real estate agents, show them real estates, show them houses, apartments, or whatever you, you uh -huh. know, whatever you offer, right. and not, right. hey, this is me standing in front of a house, and you know, it with doesn't a, matter with the sold side. Exactly. Yes. Yeah. 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 Interesting. Okay. So now I wanted to go into um, maybe a little bit more of the active strategies mm -hmm. um, because okay you have a website okay or a landing page mm -hmm. okay now we all are familiar with email marketing but we've all, we're all spammed to death oh yeah yes so how do I get people to my website that are people the, the logical people who I want coming to mm -hmm. my website because okay I've got content I've got all the multimedia I've got the videos I've got all the really great stuff on my landing page or my website, mm -hmm. okay? But I don't need everybody coming to my site, right? okay? So how do I find the relevant people, mm -hmm. okay? Um, do I use Facebook? Am I using YouTube? Um, and if I'm gonna use YouTube, what's the right way to use YouTube? Mm -hmm. What's the right way to do that? Yeah, that's, uh, that's a good question. Um, like you mentioned in, at the very beginning, YouTube is the number two search engine um, when it comes to, you know, like, when it comes to searches, YouTube is number two right behind Google. Mm -hmm. So wow. just like you said, you know, um, people are more and more absorbing videos online. Right. And um, um, I, have a, I have a German travel site, and all we do uh, is we have videos about Hawaii. You know, uh, hike up Diamond Head or uh, hike up Cocoa Head, go to the North Shore. And because people, Hawaii is all about the beauty of the nature. Mm -hmm. So people, that's what people want to see. Right. And um, so we created a YouTube channel and um, uh, uh, people love it because they can, you know, they can experience Hawaii. And then from there, they go to our website and they leave their email address because we have more great content there. And then we can, you know, keep in contact. Mm -hmm. um, so this is one way. The other way that you said, uh, that you uh, uh, talked about is uh, Facebook advertising, for example. Well, Facebook advertising, um, you know, we, we had talked a little bit about this earlier. Yeah. And uh, there's sort of the easy way to do Facebook advertising. Oh, yeah. The problem is it's not necessarily the most effective. Absolutely, yeah. Now, maybe you could talk about that sort of, that, that, that series of approaches that people sort of go through right. with Facebook advertising. Because right. you're saying the first thing is when you click on it, when you, when you, want, to, when you want to sort of project out maybe a little video that you did with yeah. folks. The first thing you do, what is what, what is that called? Where you boost post? You boost you yeah. boost the post, right? Right, right, right. So if I'm boosting a post, it's sort of a random thing. It doesn't really. It just you know, uh, um, whenever you post something on on your uh, uh, Facebook page or uh -huh. uh, 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 on Facebook in your uh, in your timeline, um, it goes out to your friends and to people that have sort of the same interest and. Um, if you, whenever you boost... Well, that assumes that we have friends, but yeah. Yeah, yeah, yeah. yeah. <laughs> <laughs> well, so, so, yeah, so we got a few friends on Facebook. Right. And we send it to them. Of course, after a while, they get annoyed if we keep sending them stuff like right, that, right? Right, so right, Maybe we don't want to boost too much. Exactly. In the direction. And the, and the boost... Because actually what I heard on Facebook now is you have a way to remove people from sending you content without defriending them. Absolutely. Without them knowing about it. Exactly, yeah. yeah. <laughs> people who share too much. Right, right, right. right. Yeah, I did that yes. with my ex-girlfriend. So. <laughs> <laughs> oh, oh, man. Okay. Okay, so, um, so that, that, that's happening now. But there are more sophisticated ways to use Facebook. Yeah. One of them is the editor tool and then or the power editor tool. Right. Um, absolutely, and the the thing what you just explained is like stage one is uh, boost post, which is very easy. You just click PayPal, uh, you know, PayPal the money, and that's it. Mm -hmm. um, then you have the editor, and the editor you have a little bit more um, opportunity, possibilities to you know like uh, design your advertisement and all that. And then mm -hmm. there's the power editor. Now and the power editor is this sort of unknown sort of black box. Yeah. The problem with the power editor with Facebook is you have to actually dig for it. Exactly. Yeah. Now, you would think Facebook would go, well, here it is, but they don't do that. Right, right. Well, because the power editor actually makes it, uh, 
tar easier for you to set up your target audience and to attract the right people instead of just you know blowing something out you mm -hmm, know mm -hmm. uh, so Facebook kind of makes less money because you know you don't keep on spending as much as as if you would just boost a post over and over. Right, again. okay. So, but nevertheless, the power editor is, uh, is a good tool. Um, I use it, uh, I use the Facebook ads um, uh, for, uh, for, the, uh, for the travel site to get subscribers to my email list. So uh -huh. uh, Facebook has a, a, a brand new uh, uh, way of advertising that. Um, it's called uh, Facebook ads, Facebook lead ads. Facebook lead ads. Exactly, Facebook lead So let's ads. talk about this. This is sort of new. Yes. This is new stuff. Right. Okay, cutting edge. We're in the bleeding edge area <laughs> here. Okay. Uh, and so say it one more time for our audience. Facebook lead ads. Facebook lead ads. Yes. And how does that work? F Facebook lead ads, um, the good thing about that is we talked about it, you know, you create a website or a landing page, you want to, the, you want to get people to your site, and of course you want to you wanna get in touch with them. You want their email address or you want their phone number or whatever. Mm -hmm. And um, Facebook lead ads is a great tool to get their name, their email address, or whatever information they left on Facebook, and when they hit the subscribe button, mm -hmm. um, they just, you know, uh, as soon as they hit a subscribe button, it opens up a little window and it shows the information that they would leave if they now hit, you know, like accept. So okay. I, I just do it with name and email address. And then um, I did it for the last uh, uh, four or five days and very small budget and I had great results. So Interesting. People, yeah, it's, it's a really good tool. I really like it. Okay. So now there are some other tools out there as well. Uh, for people who are trying to get more stuff moving through the site. Um, so I would like to, let's talk about like uh, Pinterest, mm -hmm. Instagram. Mm -hmm. uh, do you use any of these tools, these social media platforms? Uh, well, yes, I use them. Um, one of the most important things, especially if we, when we talk about entrepreneurs, uh -huh. startups, is yeah. don't start and be the one who says, hey, I want to be on Pinterest, I want to be on Instagram, I want to be on Facebook, I want to be there, and blah, blah. And, you know, there's so many different tools out there. Mm -hmm. um, but if you have a Facebook page, that takes a lot of work to maintain it. You yes. know, you have to have fresh content and all this. Uh, so starting with, like, five different social networks when, when you're just about to start a company, is overwhelming. It could be a little overwhelming. Oh, yeah. So, um, so yeah, because you're going to have to have somebody support all this Absolutely. activity, right? Absolutely, yeah. Okay. Now, if you're a real estate, now you work with real estate people also? Yes. Okay. Have you used uh, sites like hotpads.com? Uh, not yet, no. Okay. So, there are certain sites out there that will help you to syndicate mm -hmm. information. Now, mm -hmm. I, I just know this because I've, I've been playing around with some uh, ideas with the real estate market. Okay. Uh, but there are also other sites that will help you to syndicate content out there for you. Oh, okay. Mm -hmm. Okay. Mm -hmm. Yes. So if we have sites that will do that for you, what that does is allows you to sort of leverage your content right. in, new, in, in uh, different ways. Right. Okay. So, um, which I think is great. Mm -hmm. um, I think that's one of the, the keys to, to being successful is finding other people who can help you to leverage your existing Absolutely. content and reuse it. Um, okay. So, uh, Anything else you would like to, to, to talk about um, when you talk about like LinkedIn? What, mm -hmm. What's going on with LinkedIn these days? Uh, LinkedIn is, a, is a, a great network when it comes to business relationships. Mm -hmm. um, I think the last time I checked is we, uh, we had like 370,000 people on Oahu that use LinkedIn. Yeah. So it's a great network to connect you know, with business people. Uh -huh. But you know, content for LinkedIn mm -hmm. would seem to me would have a different expectation. Absolutely. Yeah. So uh, when you're d developing content for LinkedIn versus a social media, other social media mm -hmm. sites, what are some of the factors that you look at? Mm. Um, for LinkedIn, for example, um, you cannot use the same uh, content that you used on Facebook already. You know, uh -huh. because Facebook people. 
people go to Facebook and visit Facebook to be entertained, to see the newest cat pictures or whatever, yes, and then yes, you know, yes, yes. every once in a while yeah, they the get kittens. exactly. Yeah. Every once in a while they they get annoyed by uh, uh, by some you know advertisements that are you know in between the cat pictures. Uh -huh. um, but uh, uh, LinkedIn is more of a, a business network. When you post on LinkedIn, you really have to have very valuable information. Um, post content that is um, not like, it's not old content, it's not like things from, from back in the days. Uh -huh. you, know? you have to have valuable information because what you do on LinkedIn is you expose yourself as business owner, and you know you are looking for business partners. So yeah. a cat picture might not be the right <laughs> right thing to do. Say it isn't so. We can't put kitty cats on LinkedIn. <laughs> yeah, maybe that's what it is. I'm not seeing enough cat pictures on LinkedIn these days. <laughs> maybe that's that's one of the challenges. Um, so now, what kind of projects are you working? If people wanted to get a hold of you, mm -hmm. how would they reach out to you? Uh, well, the easiest uh, easiest thing is to just go to my website, GermanGoogleGuy.com. And um, or give me a call. Uh, the the phone number is right on the side. And whenever you have questions concerning uh, website optimization, search engine optimization, um, or you want to have a landing page, um, this is all stuff that we do. We advertise on Facebook or on LinkedIn. Mm -hmm. um, we help you with your YouTube channel. So these are all things that we that we help. Um, our clients with and the easiest way is to just go to our website germangoogleguy.com and uh, give us a call. Okay, all right, great. Um, so now, uh, any other tips or ideas about uh, internet marketing strategies that you'd like to, to uh, maybe give us a couple of your trade secrets? <laughs> um, it's the money is in the list. It's uh, uh, it's an older saying, which means uh, the more contact information, email information uh, you have about your client, um, the better it is. And um, I see that nowadays. Uh, it's it's still true. Um, the the more uh, leads you have, and the better your email marketing is, um, the higher your return on investment will be. And uh, email marketing is a great way. Um, just make sure you don't spam uh, the people because once you're on the spam list, um, mm -hmm. you're in trouble. Now, would you use um, entities like MailChimp? Yes. Uh, and maybe MailChimp is, what is a MailChimp? Uh, maybe you could help us to sort of describe what MailChimp is for people who want to do email marketing. Yeah. Uh, well, we use MailChimp and um, it's, a, it's a great tool to um, set up your emails to um, build your email list. Um, you can mm -hmm. have a, a subscribe um, form on your website, and whenever somebody you know uh, uh, types in your email address and hits the submit button, it directly goes into your uh, list on Mailchimp, for example. There's mm -hmm. you know there's other uh, uh, tools out there, Constant uh, Contact, and mm -hmm. uh, all these uh, things, and it, it, they really help you to. Um, keep track of your lists. They have automation tools, which means not every time somebody uh, signs up, you have to write them an email. Uh, mm -hmm. uh, no, you, you just set up the automated process. So these are, this is what they call like an autoresponder exactly. email. Yeah. Uh, and MailChimp and other sites like MailChimp right. have that built in as a feature of right. their platform. Right. So what you can do is you can actually say, OK, so w the first email or somebody signs up on your page, and mm -hmm. then within two days, or after two days, he gets a welcome email saying, hey, welcome to my site. I'm glad you're here. This is what we have for you, blah, 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 mm -hmm. blah. Three days after that, the automated process sends the, uh, the subscriber another email saying, hey, um, did you check this part of my website out yet? Mm -hmm. Five days mm -hmm. after that. And you know, so it just, so it just keeps keeps content. Keeps, keeps, yeah. con keeps the communication going. Absolutely. Yeah. yeah, and you don't necessarily have to do that for every individual. Exactly. That's the beauty of it. Absolutely, yeah. Okay. And um, so MailChimp has that, uh, the sites like MailChimp. Yes. There's something people should look at when they're setting up their marketing scheme. Yes. Or yes. doing online marketing. Yes. So okay. whenever you know you you have this, you have a conversion funnel. So you pretty much bring people in from uh, uh, Google, from Facebook, from LinkedIn, and then you at the end of the conversion funnel, there's the sale. There's you know where you actually make money. And email marketing is one of the parts of this conversion funnel um, to actually you know 
get the people it's to also, take action. And it's also a mechanism by which people can communicate with you. In other words, if you send them a reminder email yes. of an upcoming event, let's say you're having an event, right. you may have had them sign up for the event, but you also want them to show up. So you may even use that autoresponder feature as a tool to remind them Absolutely. of the upcoming event that they've already signed up for. Absolutely. That's what we do with our, uh, we do webinars in, in Germany for real estate agents, actually. Uh -huh. And uh, there we have a, a, a reminder email, you know, uh, one day before the actual webinar, we tell them, hey, tomorrow at 2 p.m., there's the webinar that you signed up for. And then 20 minutes before the webinar starts, we send them another email of course, automatic, mm -hmm. uh, automatically, and uh, uh, saying, hey, in 20 minutes, be at your uh, uh, computer, because then the webinar starts. So, and after the webinar, we send them uh, an email depending on what they did. Did they actually buy something at the end, mm -hmm. or didn't they buy? If they bought something, we're like, hey, congrats, great that you were, it was uh -huh. awesome having you. Uh -huh. And if they didn't buy, we're like, hey, what happened? Here's again, you know, like a special <laughs> offer or whatever. Tell, yeah, maybe we're going we're gonna to give you another indu inducement to purchase. Right, right, right. Yes, yes. Well, Daniel, it's great to have you on the show today. Thanks Thank you so much me. for coming on. I know that this whole thing with search engines, it, it, it can be overwhelming for a small business person. Yeah. And they, they want to know about it. They want to have an understanding about the technology. But you can sort of get lost in the morass. Oh, absolutely. Yeah, there's so much there. Yeah. Okay. But I want to thank you for coming on the show today. And uh, I hope you get uh, a few people that will give you a call and uh, take advantage of your services. Awesome. Yes. I'm, uh, I'm Chris Lethem. Uh, and uh, this is The Economy and You. And thank you for watching today. And we'll see you again next week. Aloha. Hi, I'm your host, 